In our last couple videos, we talked a lot about a function mu that would generalize the definition of a polyam. In our last video, we talked about Vitali set, the set in which we had contradictions when we asked certain properties for this function mu. And those properties we were asking for mu was, first of all, for it to be defined in parts of the set I was working with. In that case, it was the set of the real numbers and we also asked for it to have three properties and we needed these three properties because it would give us consistency with the things we already know how to measure but we concluded the video knowing that we were asking way too many things for mu but we still kind of want consistency we can't have contradictions so where is really the problem well the problem is we are asking for mu to be defined over parts of the set we are working with. We want to be able to measure everything. And what happens is, when we try and measure everything, and when we want consistency, we get contradictions. So what's going to happen is, we're going to weaken this property right here. We're going to say, okay, so let's sacrifice a few sets and gain the consistency. And from what we did in the last video, it is clear that Pitali is going to be one of these sets that we won't be able to measure. We will see more about that in the future. For now, all we know is that we have to weaken this property. We have to look for other sets in which we can measure things. And that's why we have to define sigma algebras. Before going straight to sigma algebras, let's start with a more basic structure called an algebra. So we have a non-empty set, let's call it x. x is going to be the space in which we will be working. For example, last video we said it was going to be r, but it could be just any set. And we say that a collection, and we're going to call it a, of subsets of x. So we know that this set a is a subset of parts of x. We say that A is an algebra if it satisfies these two properties. So the first one is whenever we grab an element in the set, in the algebra, its complement has to be there. And when we grab a finite amount of sets, so we grab finite sets in A, then their union is also in there. Okay, so if we have an element its complement is in the algebra, and if we have any number of sets, but always finite, okay, so n here is just any, a natural number, then the union of all those sets has to be in the algebra. Okay, when these two properties are satisfied for some collection A, then we can say A is an algebra. Before going into examples, let's actually define the sigma algebra, which is the structure we're going to be using most of the time. So a sigma algebra is an algebra, but it's closed under countable unions. So what does it mean? Well, it's actually telling us it's satisfied these two properties because it is an algebra, but it's closed under countable unions. So here, property number two was that the algebra is closed under finite unions. Okay, we, we grab any number of finite elements, and then the finite union is there. And now a sigma algebra says, okay, the same happens, but with countable units. So it's gonna satisfy two things. Well, if we grab any element in the algebra, then a complement also has to be in the algebra. Okay, this is property number one, and we know it satisfies that because it says a sigma algebra is an algebra. But the second property, well, instead of writing the second one, we're gonna write it in a more general way because it's for countable unions. So if a1, a2, and so on, so a countable sequence of sets in A, so we have infinitely, maybe finite, but in particular it can be an infinite amount of subsets 
of A, then the countable union, so from J equals 1 to infinity, of A sub J, so this union, it says it's closed. So that means that the union is also a member of the sigma algebra. So that is a definition. Now let's go ahead and see a few examples because when we look at these things in a sort of abstract way, it's very hard to imagine the definitions. Let's say that we have the set X, A, B, and C. A, B, and C can be anything we want. And we define this collection that's going to have the empty set, the whole set, the set only with the element A, and the set that has elements B and C. So we ask ourselves, is this a sigma algebra? We would have to check that these true properties are being satisfied. So whenever we grab a set, that is that whenever we grab a set in the algebra, that is an element here, its complement is there. So let's check if that is actually happening here. Well, luckily our algebra has very few elements. So we say the empty set is in our algebra. Well, the empty set complement is the whole set, right? Well, and x is right here. So we are fine for the empty set. But we have to check this for any element in the sigma algebra or in the collection. We, we don't know yet if it is a sigma algebra. So let's move on to the second one. The second one is x. And we say, well, what is x complement? Well, x complement is the empty set. And the empty set, we just said it was in the sigma algebra. So again, we are fine so far. The third set, the third element, is the set formed by with A. It's also called a singleton, the singleton A. Okay, so A, the set, is in our collection. What is its complement? When we look at our set, the complement of the set formed with this one is going to be just the other two that are missing, B, C. Okay, so the complement of A is the set B, C. And B, C, well, it's right here. So it is in our collection. And obviously the last one is very simple. The last element we have there is B, C. And B, C complement is A which is also, we just said, in our collection. So this is the first property. We still don't know if our collection is a sigma algebra or not. It satisfies this first property. Now we have to check the second one. So whenever we grab a number of elements in A, their union has to be there. So in this case, it's a finite collection, so it won't have any infinite unions. and it's very simple, so let's just check it, um, just talking, let's not write anything because writing is probably going to be more confusing. Well, obviously, the empty set union anything else will be anything else. X union anything else is X, so X is in our algebra. And when we make the union of, for example, A with BC, well, A union BC is the whole X, so again, it is in our sigma algebra. So it is in, in our collection, so as the second property is also being satisfied, we can say that this set is a sigma algebra. And let's recap a bit. Why are we talking about sigma algebras? Okay, because it seems so odd, like why are you proposing these sets why are you talking about if the complement is there, if the unions are there? Okay, let's remember what our objective is. We want to be able to measure things 
and to keep consistency with the things we already know. So what's going to happen is these functions that we will define in a few videos, these functions, these generalizations of the notion of volume are going to be defined over sigma algebras. In some cases, maybe defining it over parts of the set will work, because obviously parts of anything is a sigma algebra. It has absolutely every subset, so in particular it has the complements of any set, so it satisfies property 1, and it will obviously have any possible unions, because it has every possible subset, so property number 2 will also be satisfied trivially. So then we can actually start by mentioning a few properties. So the first one we just said that part of x is a sigma algebra. Another sort of, I don't know if say another interesting or very uninteresting sigma algebra I can be either of those is the one formed by the empty set and the whole set. This too will obviously work for any x. And, well, this one, the first one, parts of x, is the biggest sigma algebra. So that is, if I grab any other sigma algebra, let's say a, a sigma algebra, over x, then what will happen is that a will be a subset of parts of x, so parts of x is the biggest sigma algebra, and this other one, the empty and the whole set, is the smallest one, in this sense, in that it is contained in any other sigma algebra we grab. So this is a third property. These two trivial sigma algebras are the biggest one and the smaller one, respectively. So let's say we have a sigma algebra, and let's say we have a bunch of elements, a1, a2, and so on, elements in our sigma algebra, countable many, then we can write the intersection of them from j equals 1 to infinity as the union of the complements of each and the complement of all these. E sub j is an element of a for all j, right? Because this is what we said here. And because a is a sigma algebra, then E sub j complement is also in a, also for every j. And then we have many complements that are all in j, so their countable union from j equals 1 to infinity, this must also be in A, because it's just a countable union of elements in A. But then, if this is also an element, its complement has to be in A, right? So, and this has also to be an element in A. But we just said that this thing is just the intersection. So this tells us that whenever we grab any list of elements in a sigma algebra, not only do we have their union, we also have the intersections. And the last property we're going to see, let's say we have also a, a sigma algebra, and an element e. Again, because a is a sigma algebra, then e complement is in a. And we should say that if we grabbed any two elements, their intersection, on this last property, their intersection would also be in the sigma algebra. So we have E and E complement, two elements in the, in the sigma algebra, then their intersection is also in the sigma algebra. But their intersection is the empty set. So any sigma algebra has the empty set. And also the second property of sigma algebras told us that their union was in the sigma algebra. And what is the union of E and its complement? Well, it's 
the whole set. So any sigma algebra has the empty set and has the whole x, the whole space. This is a very quick way to visualize to know whenever we graph a set if it's not a sigma algebra because you can immediately search for the empty set and the whole set and if they're not there then immediately you can say this will not be a sigma algebra. In the next video let's do some practice, grab a few sets and decide whether they are or not sigma algebra.